Hey, this is Boran Dulos with the Creative Egg Podcast, where we discuss the God-given passion, pain, and purpose for the creative individual. Hello and welcome to the Creative Egg Podcast. I am your host, Boran. And I am a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, and composer, as well as a musical intercessor at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, Missouri. I have several music albums under varying artists and genres available wherever you stream music. And with this podcast, it's my desire to encourage and exhort artistic people to faithfully steward their God-given creative ache. It has been a couple of weeks since I released my last episode of this podcast. Things got pretty busy, and on top of that, I've been really having a hard time with my voice. So I just decided to kick back a little bit the past couple weeks, but also getting ready to give you plenty of podcast episodes to help aid you in your creative journey. Now, if you didn't know, I recently released an instrumental acoustic guitar album titled Graceful Guitar. I released this album under the artist's name A Journey in Rest, where I create instrumental albums to help serve as a sort of musical help to bring relaxation, rest, and peace to the average daily life. You can listen to my album Graceful Guitar anywhere that you would normally stream music, Apple, Spotify, wherever. And I've heard a lot of wonderful testimonies about how it's helped people already, but but the common and most intriguing one to me is just how I'm hearing about people putting these songs on after their day at work to help decompress or even avoid angst that can happen with the rush hour traffic on the return home. So again, go ahead and check out that album by A Journey in Rest titled Graceful Guitar and let me know what you think about it. Today, I want to talk about a subject that is a common issue and challenge for artistic people of all kinds. I have struggled with this tremendously in my personal walk, and again, I think this is the most common thing I have heard or seen online that people struggle with, but I really believe that there's some very easily implemented practical elements to help overcome this particular issue. We're going to discuss that all today and hopefully get you some helpful tools for your tool belt to be a more prolific artisan. And that issue that we're going to be talking about today is the issue of writer's block. This happens to everyone in any creative pursuit. And as much as we want to never experience this, it's just a part of the journey for the artisan. But again, I really believe there are very helpful and practical ways that can help writer's block become really a non-issue in our creative pursuits. Writer's block is obviously a term that comes more from the writer side of artistry, but it infects all forms of creativity. And it's essentially when we as creatives feel stumped or blocked from being able to ideate and produce new or novel pieces of our artwork. I think a wonderful picture of this would be if you turned on a hose but you were bending it at one point, then even though the faucet is open and water is trying to flow through, it has a stoppage and so no water is actually coming out of the hose. But again, I think there are actually very simple ways to unfold that block in the hose to allow that creativity to flow. Today I'm going to discuss the thing that has most helped me open up that sort of flow to create. And I keep saying that it's a simple way to address this issue, but I'm not going to say necessarily that it's the easiest way. What I mean by that is to say there are often solutions in our lives to problems that are simple in nature, but maybe they're difficult because of our personality or our circumstances to apply. See, I definitely know what it's like to have writer's block. In fact, most recently, in the past several years, the way that I would say I experienced this, 
and you can see it if you look at my music portfolio. I went really heavy for a few years writing and releasing music from about the time of 2015 until 2019. But after my final release in 2019, I basically did not work on music for most of the following two or three years. In fact, one of my artists, Assay, only has one song released from that time period. And that one song was actually a song that I wrote and recorded in four days for a competition. So out of somewhere around 1,200 days or so over that couple of years, I only spent four days actually writing for a say. And believe me, I wanted to, but I every time I set my mind to do it, I just didn't have that inspiration. I did not have the ideation. Novel creativity was not flowing. But I shifted something pretty dramatically around the time of August in 2022, so about nine months ago. And since that time, I have written more music in this past nine months than I've written in probably my entire time of living in Kansas City since 2015. So the thing that I shifted has caused me to be much more prolific as an artist. And I'm just going to let you know, it has very little or nothing to do with my ambition or creative ideas. And that one thing that I shifted, and the one thing that I'm going to share with you today that I believe to be probably the most important thing you can do as an artist to end writer's block, and not just end writer's block, but to cause your fruitfulness to abound and multiply as an artist, is this. Schedule your creativity. Yes, I did just say the big bad word. Schedule. I'm sure that 90% or more of the creatives that are listening to this podcast are freaking out right now. And I want you to know I am an ENFP on the Myers-Briggs, somewhere probably a 9 on the Enneagram, although I can't confirm because every time I've taken the test I get a different answer. So prone to distraction and wandering. But what I've found is that if I schedule my creative time, then I remove from the equation the biggest obstacle which is whether or not I have creative inspiration. Every week I've set aside specific time where I sit down at my computer or at an instrument and I open my software for writing music, I write regardless of if I had an idea of what I was going to write about, regardless of any inspiration or feelings. Oftentimes, this is me picking up where I left off on a project or starting something based on an idea that I had written down or whatever. And most of the time when I sit down, I have no persuasion about creating. I'm not inspired. I don't feel like doing it. But the magic of scheduling your creative time is that, again, it removes the obstacle of creative inspiration. It no longer exists because you're forcing yourself to do what you were made to do regardless of how you feel about it. And I'll say that every single time I do this, if I've done it right, meaning I set my time and I'm there when I set my time and I've turned off distractions, my notifications are on do not disturb and with discipline, I'm staying off of anything of my phone or any kind of social media or anything that distracts me from writing. When I do that, I usually find myself inspired within the first 10, sometimes 20 minutes. Once you start and you begin putting pen to paper, paintbrush to canvas, or in my case, pick to string, or something like that, the creative juices begin to flow. That bent point in the hose begins to open up. And then I actually find it difficult to stick to the remaining parts of my scheduled life because now... I am actually wanting to stay at my computer and continue writing even if I have something else pressing to do. In fact, I'll put it this way. 
I rarely start my scheduled creative sessions with inspiration, and I rarely end them at a point where I feel resolved and ready to stop. I'm nearly always having to force myself to begin and nearly always having to force myself to end. Again, this doesn't go well with most of our creative nature, but it actually is one of the most powerful things that you can do, and it's incredibly practical. It's simple. All it takes is you scheduling time and then having the diligence to focus during that scheduled time. No inspiration is required, but I promise you, if you spend any amount of weeks or months doing this, you're going to look back on that time period and realize that you have multiplied your creative output drastically. And that, when you see that kind of fruit, inspires you to keep doing it. One of the challenges I faced in doing this is that sometimes life gets in the way and I've actually had times where I am not able to get to that scheduled time and then maybe I get behind and life gets hectic and I start having kind of a compromised schedule, so to speak. And my creativity is the quickest thing to go off in time. And then time really begins to fly and I realize days might have gone by without me writing and I hardly knew it. It's much easier to stay consistent day to day after you've already got momentum than it is to start and stop and start again. The starting and the adjusting is the hard part, but once you're in that mode day after day, you really begin to see a multiple fold increase of your creative output. So I want to encourage you, if you're suffering from writer's block, I'm sure there are many other ways to help remedy that. But from my experience as a creative person who's been struggling with this for 20 years now, I can 100% say that the biggest thing that I changed in my life that has made the most impact on my creative output and overcoming writer's block is to schedule my creativity and be diligent about that scheduled time. I hope that this podcast episode has been helpful for you today. And I want to let you know that me discussing this subject today was actually at the request of a fellow artisan. And so I want to let you know that though I have plenty of content subjects planned out for the future, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you would like to hear discussed on this podcast. Anything about art in general or even specifically your realm of art or specific problems that you might be having in your journey. You can find me on Instagram at Borandulos Music, and I'd be happy to chat with you there. Also, don't forget that you can listen to my latest instrumental acoustic guitar album on Spotify, Apple, or anywhere else that music is streamed. The album is called Graceful Guitar, and I released it under the artist A Journey in Rest. Thank you for joining me on this episode today, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the Creative Ache Podcast.